five, four, three, two, one. Okay. The format of the lottery is to pick five numbers from one to 59 and then a sixth number from 60 to 99. You're going to set up a lot. You've all set up a lottery ticket by picking five numbers, one through 59, and a sixth number from 60 to 99. Let's see how lucky you are today. You guys said I should do one? Okay, here we go. I'm going to do. No, I can't cheat, right? Like, you're right here watching me put the numbers down. Because. So, here we go. Oh, I don't. I'll show you how I don't know. So, my little dude, my little dude, Clark, he was born March 12th. My daughter was born on November 18th. Uh-huh. I was born, I, uh, my, uh, my wife was born in July. And then I had to pick another number. I guess if I add all these, well, let's see here. Uh, my wife was born in 1986. So there's my, there's, my, there's, there's my lottery ticket. There's my lottery ticket. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is I've gone ahead and I've pulled up my favorite website in the whole wide world, random.org. What? Hey, that's not random.org. What? What are you? <laughs> Certainly not. I don't know what, what this is. Coupon codes. I don't know what that means. Go away. <laughs> okay. So random.org. It's gonna I'm gonna ask it to pick five I'm gonna pick five numbers and how random.org works is that it picks numbers based on uh, it's got a big list of numbers that were randomly generated and Let's see here. And what it does is it uses internet noise to decide which one to do. So we're going to pick one at a time because that's going to be way more fun. And it's between 1 and 59, right? That was the first one? All right. Here we go. So here's number first number. 22. So I do not have 22. My ticket is dead. Who here's still alive? Who here's still alive? Okay. There's one, two, there's four of you. Okay. Second, second number. 25. Is anybody's ticket still alive? Yeah. Nope. 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 Doesn't matter. If you had a 22, you were in, you were alive. Did anybody have a 22 and a 25? Nope. Oh, okay. So, what, just do the whole thing? Yeah. Well, okay, so it was 22, 25, 24, 36, 54, and now we need one from uh, 60 to 99. Hmm. Oh, hold on. 90, 160 to 99. Oh, yeah, let's see if anybody got the, the, uh, anybody got the last number right, because that would be cool. Nope. You get, just like the real lottery, guy, lottery guys, you get bub kiss for this. Bub kiss. Yeah, I get all the numbers. So if you, I, the way the lottery works is you win a small prize if you get all five of the numbers right, and you win the big prize if you get all five numbers and the last numbers right. It was 96. Anybody have 96? Okay. Now, okay, so you know what, guys? We're going to quintuple our odds of winning. Here's what I want you to do. Go ahead. Make five lottery tickets. That is, I want one, two, three, four, five tickets where the first five numbers are between zero and 59. And then the others are from 60 to 90. The last one's from 60 to 90. Go ahead. Make up five tickets. Five brand new tickets because do you think we might get a winner this time? No. Well, let's find out. Tell you what, if any of you guys win this one, I think I still will give you 100 dub coin. I still will. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No cheating now. Make five lottery tickets. If you want, if you're like, I've, I got a good feeling if I use that ticket again. You can use it again. I want five tickets. Make five tickets. 
The last ones, so the first five are zero to 59, last one's 60 to 99. You gotta get them all. If you get the first five, I'll give you 50, and then if you get them all, I'll give you 100. No, if you get like one full ticket, that's right. <laughs> nope. Hey guys, you're just in time to play the lottery. <laughs> Okay, guys, will you tell them what we're doing and get them to help them make some lottery tickets? Where's Carter, guys? Well, probably not. <laughs> you know what's funny is you guys are all of a sudden acting just like grown-ups who are buying lottery tickets. It's like, let's all pool our, our, all of ours together, and if one of us wins, we'll split the dub coin. <laughs> So the last one. So it's five digits, zero to 59. Last one is 60 to 99. Yeah, yeah. I think it's zero. Didn't I say zero? Isn't there a zero? No one. You can't do zero. No zero. Sorry, guys. No zeros. No zeros. I'm going to give you one more minute. Come up with as many tickets as you can. We're going to see if we can get a winner. Winner. Five. Uh, we're going to do one more minute. If you can get five tickets, I'll let you have up to five. 500 tickets? Sure. And you know what? I'll still give you 500. I'll still give you 100 dub coin if you win with 500 tickets. I'm not worried. I am super not worried. <laughs> Like, honestly, I've, I do this every year, and I think I will, I will do this lesson until I die, and I don't think anybody is ever going to win. Nope. 60 to 99 is your last one. Take 45 seconds, guys. I got you. I got you, Annabelle. You got your tickets? Yep. All right. Hi, Gabby. Come, yeah, come look. Come look around. That's fine. I haven't seen anything quite like it, but I'll, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Okay. Take 20 seconds. All right. <laughs> Big chance indeed. Oh no, order doesn't matter. I don't care. Like when I like when I got it when I when I had 22, anyone who had 22 anywhere in there still had a living ticket. Mhm. Mm okay. Here we go. All right, guys, finish up that ticket. Here we go. Here comes the first set. All right, guys, take a look at your tickets. The first number is 52. Oh, I have How many? I lost. Cross off any tickets that do not have a 52. I don't care if 52's last. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, who here still has a living ticket? Oh, look at that. Yes, Thalia. You still have a living ticket. Okay. Second number. 35. No way. Does your no ticket way. with 35, 52 have a 35? If it does, you're alive. Does anybody have the 52 and the 35 on the same ticket? Okay. So we got, uh, we got uh, Winston. We got, uh, we got Jane and we got Annabelle. Here comes the third. Oh, are you alive still, Ruth? Oh, yeah. Make sure those of you next door, please uh, verify this on those tickets, okay? Here we go. 28. 
<laughs> Whoa, Ruthie! Okay, Ruthie! Okay, Ruthie! So hold on, Ruthie, are you, is yours the last ticket alive? Is anyone having a ticket alive other than Ruthie? Ruthie, tell me what your ticket is. So we need a 57 and a 14, right? <laughs> It's thinking. Oh, I think it might have, but that doesn't count. 17. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, wait, okay, wait. Even if that was allowed, that means this has to be a 54, right? Yeah, so it's really good. If it's a 54, it's 47. Oh, it's got a seven and a four. <laughs> oh, oh, bummer. Anyway, guys, as like I said, I'll, I'm going to say Ruthie made it farther than I think anybody has. Like three numbers is a pretty big deal. And we're going to talk a little bit about why today. We're going to talk a little bit about why today. Guys, it is the 148th day of school. 148 is Dunbar's number, the theoretical limit of the number of real personal relationships a human is capable of maintaining. The short way of saying that is, is that in theory, according to uh, uh, psychologists, some psychologists, they think that human beings are capable of truly caring about 148 other people. Now, because of class sizes being the way they are, most teachers at Wasatch have about 180 students, so things are starting to make sense now, aren't they? <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. You're like, oh, I know which. I'm part of that 32. Hey, it's four squared day. Get it? Because it's April 16th, and 4 squared is 16. March 9, March 9 was 3 squared day. February 2nd, or February 4th was 2 squared day. Uh, I don't know if January 1st counts, because that's kind of stupid. <laughs> right? And then we'll have another one, 5 squared day in, Mar in May. And then, of course, guys... June 36th is going to be six squared day. June 36th. Yes, June 36th. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to need our math notebook, our pencil, and our calculator. There's no self-assessment today. Oh, right out the gates, huh? In the front. Oh, no. oh, no, wait. We don't have... Wait. You know what, though? You guys did awesome for the sub yesterday, and I think you guys do deserve a point for that. Thank you so much. Perfect. And then... Yeah, so, perfect. Okay. So, yeah, sorry. That one. Yeah, because I, I messed up on my board a bunch. I really screwed it up. That was bad. That was bad. They figured it out. Okay, come on up in five, four, three, two, one. Miss Haley, what is our first essential question today? Okay, how can I prepare for tomorrow's Skill check on probability. Hey guys, come on in. Okay. Voices in five, four, three, two, one. By the way, music genres with its roots in the 1970s with acts like DJ Cool Herc and the Sugar Hill Gang. This genre now hosts megastars like Gunna, Eminem, and Travis Scott, and way, way more. That is rap. And things seen at a hospital, that's a fish tank. It's because people find them calming. I think so. I think the fish don't find them calming, especially in the pediatrician's office where my son, who was four, bangs on the glass the second he comes in. And I'm like, Clark, don't do that. And he's like, okay. But every time he sees him, he has to bang the glass. Anyway, his name is Clark. It's true. Got a pencil? Okay, today's topic is probability review. Uh, March 12th. It is. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about these levels, OK? So level one is you're able to tell three things. First, that you can tell whether events are disjoint or overlapping. Disjoint or overlapping. So for example, guys, if I say event one is picking someone with brown hair in this classroom and 
Number two, event two, is picking a girl. Are those events overlapping or are they disjoint? Can someone explain to me why they're overlapping? Shreya. That's right. How about this one, guys? How about this one? In this class, picking a random person, wearing a hat, or being a girl. Those are the two events. There's one event is wearing a hat, one event is being a girl. In this class right now, guys, is that disjoint or overlapping? I heard disjoint and overlapping. Yes, yeah, say that again, Maddie. Guys, this class does not have any girls wearing hats. Well, now they do because they're cheating. But this class, when I said that, there were no... Oh, was Rachel wearing a hat? I didn't notice that Rachel was wearing a hat. I think Rachel is because I've never seen you without a hat that I did. So that's overlapping. You're right. It's overlapping. I think, it, I, I, think I just assumed that was part of your person. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. So in that case, it's overlapping. But assuming, guys, assuming that Rachel wasn't wearing a hat, those would be disjoint. Do you understand the difference? That would be the difference. Okay. All right. Let's see here. How about complementary or non-complementary? So complementary events mean that if it's not one, then it has to be the other. So for example, if I pick a random person in this room, event one is I pick a student. Event two is I pick a teacher. Are, are those complementary or non-complementary? They are complementary. Well, I, I'm not saying that's two different events. They are complementary because if I pick a student, I didn't pick a teacher. And if I pick a teacher, I didn't pick a student. Like, it has to be a teacher or a student. Now, if Ms. DeHaan walked in here and I said event one is picking a teacher, event two is picking a student, would those be complementary or non-complementary? They'd be non-complementary because I could also pick a vice principal. They are disjoint. It's still disjoint. I can't pick a person who is a student and a teacher, but I, they are still, they wouldn't be complimentary. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, but there's none in this room right now. What about Ms. Crump? She, is she here? Is she hiding under my desk? <laughs> like, it's like she's like, comes out, she's like, ha ha, and then high fives Callie and like, we did it. <laughs> and then she runs away. Okay. I think she's the student teacher for art, yes? Yeah, but she left. Yeah. Left. Yeah. Such so as like, guys, it's fine. Okay, can I get you in five? Four, three, two, one. And finally, there's events that are dependent and independent. Dependent and independent. These are a little trickier. Let's say Ms. DeHaan comes in here, because you guys are doing your elections, I believe, on Friday, yes? Yeah. So Ms. DeHaan comes in, and she says, Mr. Peterson, we heard, well, OK, first of all, the bad news. Everyone voted, but all the votes disappeared. We don't know where they went. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to have you pick five random students from your sixth period class because we heard that they're the best. And I say, well, that's not wrong. And then they say, cool. So we're going to pick five random students from your, seventh, sorry, your sixth period class. And the first student we pick is going to be the president. The second student is going to be the vice president. OK. Second student is going to be the vice president. Then it's going to be secretary historian. And then it's going to be the uh, assemblies officer. And then it's going to be the uh, uh, PR, public relations. OK, come on up in five, four, three, two, one. So here's event one. Event one is that the president is going to be a girl. And event two is the vice president's going to be a boy if I randomly pick people. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, these events we would say are either dependent or independent. Dependent means that one of the probabilities changes depending on the other one. And independent means the probability does not change depending on the other one. What do you guys think? Do you think that the president being a girl and the vice president being a boy, do you think that those are dependent or independent? OK, let's see. The probability of having your president be a girl right now is, well, let's see. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14. So there's 14 girls out of a total of 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 23, 26, 29. 29, so 14 out of 29. Which is 0.483%. So 48.3%. Okay? Well, okay, who's our president? Everybody, it's Shreya. Shreya is the president. Congratulations, Shreya. Congratulations, Shreya. Now, listen carefully. I want you to talk to your partners. If Shreya has been selected as the president, can I pick her card again to be vice president? No. So you tell me, what's the probability that I pick a boy as vice president, and did that change because I picked Shreya? Teach! I'm pretty sure I had Lucy figure that out first. Good job, Lucy. I saw that dawn on you. I saw that dawn on you. Or did you did you know it before I asked? Were you one of the people who said it was dependent from the start? Okay, you changed your mind, but I heard you I heard I heard you figure that out. Okay. Come on up in five, four, three, two, one. Well, let's see here, guys. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen boys, yes? Fifteen boys out of how many total people? Not twenty-nine. Twenty-eight, because I can't pick Shreya. So fifteen out of twenty-eight is about fifty-three point six percent. So my question for you guys is, after that discussion, are these events independent or dependent? They are They are dependent. Because if I picked a boy, if I picked a boy to start, guys, there only would have been 14 boys left in the pool, right? Out of the 28, and that would have put it at a 50% chance. By the way, congratulations to our new vice president, No. G1. Carter. Carter got it. Yeah, Carter got it. Carter got it. Carter got it. Congratulations, Carter. You're our new vice president. So my prediction was right. So they are, those are what we actually call dependent events because the, the first one actually changes the probability of the second one, right? Actually changes the probability of the second one. What's that? Yeah, uh, well, the first one, yes. Well, you have to have two events for it to be independent, right? So... Yeah, we're good. Okay. I would say it would be independent if I put Shreya's name back in there and shuffled, and I was like, she could be both president and vice president. Why not? Then it would be independent because it wouldn't change. Every time it would be the same probability. Cool. Level one is you can calculate the probability of a single event, just like what's the probability of picking, uh, picking a, a girl as president. That was level one, what we just did. Level two is... Level two is... A, actually, level one is just saying that this is dependent. Level two is actually giving me this, this. Level two is not even giving me this one. Level two is just giving me this probability here. Level three, you have to be able to come up with uh, the probability of compound events. Like, what's the probability that I pick, uh, well, like, so for example, if I flip a coin and roll a die, then what's the probability that I pick, uh, uh, that, uh, that I get a heads and something higher than a, than a five. You know what I mean? That's the idea. Now let's chat about level four, because level four is all about dependent events. And I think we can actually come back. Shh. We're going to come back to our lottery game. So remember, guys, the way it works is you pick five numbers, one through 59, and then you pick another number, 60 to 99. So... How many numbers do you have to select as your first number? Well, how many different numbers can you pick as your first number? 
You can pick 59. No, because I can have one, two, three, four. See how it matches? Five. If I can have zero, then there'd be 60. That's okay. Hey, it's fine. Come on up in five, four, three, two, one. This is where it starts to get weird. Guys, how many numbers can I pick for my second one? Not 33. 39? Oh, who is it? Was that you, Adam? Adam, say it again. 58, right? Well, it's like this. It's like this. Adam, your first lottery ticket, what was your first number? 42. Now, guys, he can pick any number, 1 through 59, but can he pick 42 again? No. So what, what was your second pick? 13. Hey, can Adam pick 4 as his third number? How about 27? How about, uh, how about 59? Yeah, how about 42? No, because he already did it. So his second pick, there are 58 choices. How many in his next pick? 57. How about his next pick? 56. How about his last pick? And how about from 60 to 99? That is 39. Or is, it, is that one 40? No, that's 69. Or is it 39? Are you sure? 61, 62, 60, 64. I think it's 40. I think it's 40. I think it's 40 for the same reason Ruthie was thinking that it was 60 here or 58. It's okay. It's okay. Put your pencils down and get your voices off. Okay. Imagine all these numbers were sitting in a bag, 1 through 59, right? And you're like, this is how I'm going to pick my lottery ticket. I'm just going to reach into the bag. I'm going to pull out a number. For your first five digits, your very first pick, how many different numbers are in the bag? There's 59 numbers in the bag. You pull it up, there it is. You put it down. You reach in the bag for your second number. How many numbers are in the bag? 58. Now you reach in again. How many numbers are in the bag? Okay. Next. 56. And last. Okay, there's my five. Now, can I reach into that same bag of numbers for my last number? No. I have to pick from a different bag that has 60 through 99. So the numbers 60 through 99, there are 40 of those. Because if you think about it, there's 61, 62, 63, 64. See how that's matching my numbers on my hand? Until you get to 99, that's going to be 39. And then you get an extra one, and that's 40. So guys, if we multiply all these numbers together, you will get the total number of lottery tickets that are possible. Let's do it. 59 times 58 times 57 times 56 times 55 times 40. I'm going to help you write that. 2403065. Perfect. Off you go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And draw a couple zeros at the back. Draw a couple zeros at the back. Hmm. Because I know, because, because eighth grade. Because eighth grade. That's how many tickets there are. So when you made your five tickets, your probability of winning my lottery was five out of that number. Was five out of that number. This is the total number of lottery tickets that are possible. It's what are you talking about? Well, it's fit well, you weren't here for the lottery part, so that's okay. It's not just life. So if we actually find that probability... Whoa, 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 whoa. Can I get you in five, four, three, two, one? Don't worry. You're not going to get numbers like this on your skill check, okay? I'll, I'll start over. One. I'm just going to show you. This is why... You might be care want to be careful playing the lottery. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it was uh, 2, 0, 8. 
So, so and when you play the lottery with five tickets, you have a 0.0000000028% chance of winning. So this is honestly, I, I actually do this lesson every year because there are people who get themselves in trouble with the lottery. Like they keep buying tickets to this thing. Um, and like if people want to buy a ticket for fun, I'm not going to judge them, but never make this part of a plan. Like I want you to think about that. Your chances of winning with five tickets is 0.0000000208%. Now, if you bought 10 tickets to double your chances, a lot of people will make that financial decision. They will say, I'm going to buy 10 tickets because that's going to make my chances even higher. Congratulations. Now you have this percent chance of winning. 0.0000000416%. Guys, if you bought a hundred, well, here's the problem. Listen, Shh. here's the problem. This is a great, if you bought a hundred tickets, a hundred lottery tickets, your probability, we multiply it by 10, is now 0.0000416%. And guys, lottery tickets are not free. No, it won't. It won't. Look, if you, if you, so, okay. Can I get you in five, four, three, two, one? Great. Buy a thousand of them. And your probability is 0.0000416%. Yeah, but, but. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, if you buy 6,000 of them, congratulations. Your probability has increased. All the way to 0.0000002496%. Now, okay, guys, 10,000, great. You just move this over one. Look, there. Sure. If you buy every lottery ticket, you bet your biscuits you're going to win the lottery. But, well, but listen, even more important, this is how the lottery makes money. Lottery tickets are not free. Like even if they were only five dollars a piece, if you bought ten thousand of them, that's fifty thousand dollars, and you have a zero point zero 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 four one six percent chance of winning. Go, okay, buy a million of them. Now you've spent five million dollars, and you have a zero point zero zero four one six percent chance of winning. Okay, you just spent $5 billion, which is probably more than what the lottery's worth, and you still have a 0.416% chance of winning. Say, say it again, Claire. Yeah, but not all of it. Not all of it. Oh, well, guys. Lot, well, no, this, listen. The lottery, they, this is how they make money. You pay them five bucks. They put $2 back into the lottery and they keep three for themselves. That's so dumb. And in some states, in some states at least they give, like they, they, they give, put $2 back in the lottery, they keep $2 for themselves and they give $1 to schools. That's kind of nice. Well, like, That's kind of nice. But. Say that again, Ruthie. If you Absolutely. Even if he won. Even if he won, right? Like, yeah. Right. Exactly, because it's not worth that much. It's not worth even close to that much. Yes, Maddie. <laughs> We're getting off the rails. Shh. You have a million dollars. Maybe something like that. Here's the point. Here's the point. 
That's very level four. That's very level four. I'll tell you, a level four that is more like what you would see would be something like this. Would be something like you've got your president, your vice president, your secretary, historian. You've got your um, assemblies, and you've got your uh, uh, PR. What's the probability of having a girl president... Uh, a boy vice, girl secretary historian, something like that. That's more like what it is. And, and, and let me show you that, guys, in the interest of time. Voices. Shh, shh. Waiting. It's not going to be as bad as you think. It's not going to be the lottery numbers. The lottery, honestly, I do the lottery lesson more than anything, just as like a word of caution and like just making sure that you guys are, are not doing things that are really bad ideas like with the lottery. Yeah, like playing the lottery, assuming you're going to win. You know what I mean? Like this is my I'm, I'm going to buy 100 lottery tickets because that's going to get me out of debt. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. But, but I'm not going to tell you what to do with there, but then you have that. I, I don't I don't think there's I have no judgment for uh, for folks who just buy one for a goof. Uh, Oh, did she? That's fun. See, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fun, right? But don't buy like 10 and think like, woo, I just 10 times my chances. You did, but congratulations, it's basically still zero. See, I'm into that. Exactly. Anyway, moving along in five, four, three, two, one. So the probability of getting a president, uh, a girl president, a boy vice, and a girl, uh, uh, a girl uh, secretary historian Remember, the girl president was 14 out of 29. What was the, and then it was uh, 15 out of 28. And then how many girls were left out of, the, out of there? 13 out of how many? No, 27, because I removed another person from the pool. So the probability of all of this stuff happening is the probability of each one multiplied. So the probability of this exact thing happening is 14 out of 29. That's, that says 14 divided by 2. 14 out of 29. And we're going to multiply that by 15 out of 28. And we're going to multiply that by 13 out of 27. You just multiply the probabilities. And it's about 12.5%. I have good news about this, by the way. Tomorrow's skill check is the last traditional skill check of the year. For me, for my class. From there, everything we do, there's, there's going to be like a statistics project that you do with your groups. With groups, It's okay. We're going to make it. We have a statistics project that we're going to do with our groups. And then we're going to get into the RISE review. And then we're going to get into all like the fun games and projects that we can never do because, uh, because the year's too short there at the end. No way. This, we have, no. Wait. Okay. Let me, people say this all the time. People say this all the time. Look, look. Okay. Listen. Hang on. Okay, can I get you in five, four, three, two, one? One more lesson. Behold, I hear this all the time. The last week of school, the last day of school is May 24th. And then, unless we have a snow day from here to then, which would be pretty crazy. That's the 23rd. That's the 22nd. That's 21st. That's the 20th. Listen. Listen. I hear this all the time. Students tell me, Mr. Peterson, why do we even have the last day of school? Why, why do we even have the last day of school? Okay. Let's get rid of it. What's the problem? The 23rd. Oh, okay. Let's get rid of that. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> well, but, but Callie, then the last week of school is right here. <laughs> what? <laughs> But you're just going to say that about the next, we're going to say that about the next one. Jane's been raising her hand this whole time so politely. Please, Jane. It sure does. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> I like it when Jane says things that are true and unpopular. Thank you. Listen. That's all we have time for. Go put your stuff away. Head back to you.